In this episode, we'll visit the port city of Rostock, learn with us its rich 800 year history, feel the Hanseatic atmosphere of once Baltic power and get to know its greatest treasures. So today we are in Rostock, our next adventure. We are in the old, the old town, in the old part of the city. And we are starting from Kruperliner Tor, which is the city which is behind me. And this is the Kruperliner Straße, where are many uh, shops and restaurants so we are going to explore first of all the, the old town the oldest part of the city and uh, on the way i will tell you a little bit about about the city about what you can find in its history so enjoy rostock is a port city located in northeastern germany it is picturesquely situated along the mouth of the Warnow River to the Bay of Mecklenburg, which is a part of the Baltic Sea. Its beginnings date back to the 6th century, but its greatest flourishing took place in the 15th century. In the middle of the Körperliner Strasse, you can find the main building of University of Rostock, university which is very old, it was uh, founded in 1419. So it's one of the oldest, no, actually it's the, the oldest uh, university in Northern Europe. So the city is known for, for having this university. It's also a fountain of joy, but during uh, winter it's not working, obviously. And we'll go further. St. Mary's is Rostock's most beautiful and most important church. The triple nave cross shaped basilica from 13th century is in brick gothic, a building style typical of the Hanseatic port cities of northern Germany. You can find there unusual medieval astronomical clock, which is the only one of its kind still in working conditions with its original clockworks. This extremely precise device not only measures time, but also allows you to read for example zodiac sign, date or length of day and night. So this is the market of the former middle town. In 1218 Rostock received town rights and it was a starting shot for the development of a large and advanced metropolis in the Baltics. The privilege to trade herring and a monopoly position in trading with Norway helped the economy grow. Trade relations with other cities in the Baltic and North Sea flourished. In the mid 13th century the merchants organized the powerful Hanseatic League to secure their interest and passages. At that time, the city experienced its greatest boom and many historic buildings of the old town date from that time. Back then, up to 370 ships sailed under the municipal flag. Available merchandise from Rostock were beer and fish products. We are now in Altmarkt. Old market square and over there it's a very nice church St. Peter's Church this tower it's 117 meters high so it's quite a lot and uh, it was constructed like that uh, for sailors who were uh, navigating through Baltic Sea and wanted to to have some uh, some points uh, uh, you know, to, to recognize where the land is from the far distance. Uh, in previous times, it was the highest building uh, in Rostock. The square is surrounded with these nice, colorful houses. <laughs> so, the tower. It's, as I said, 115 meters 
but this viewpoint is at uh, 44th meter and you can see the panorama of whole Rostock. The end of golden times came in the 17th century as a result of 30 years war and the great fire of the city. The city flourished again during the industrial revolution when many new factories and plants were built in the city. Prosperity lasted until World War II, when as a result of Allied air raids, a significant part of the city's building was completely destroyed. After the war, Rostock became the main port of East Germany, and the city itself developed rapidly. After the reunification of Germany in 1989, the city lost its importance as a port and found itself in one of the poorest regions in Germany. Due to immigration, the population has decreased by 60,000 and currently stands at about 200,000 inhabitants. Just near the university, University Square, there is some nice place, which was previously the convent, but currently it houses a museum of the city of history of Rostock. So there is also a nice church, which currently is a concert hall because of its uh, very nice acoustics and in front of us also this uh, museum in the old convent and some nice cafeteries. The seaside resort Warnemünde of North Rostock offers plenty of sights worth seeing. It's like uh, full of houses of fishermen boats and of course fish fresh fish so when you can like, eat it's it a there. paradise for me <laughs> and it's very good it's some um, fried fish and uh, chips really very good you can buy it from one of the many uh, um, like small kiosks here yeah um, it's only Five euro, euros, and they they can warm it up it's for you. So I think it's worth it. Is mm -hmm. it is it worth it? Yeah, very good. For five euro. Mm. <laughs> In the past, Varnemünde was only a small fishing village. In 14th century, the village was purchased by the city of Rostock due to its strategic position in order to safeguard the city's access to the Baltic Sea. Now it is a resort with a white sandy beach and atmospheric promenade. The beach measuring at 150 meters in width, is the widest one on the German Baltic coast. There is also a port here, which is currently one of the largest passenger ports in the country. Every year, Hanse Sail Rostock takes place here. The event is among the world's largest gatherings of traditional sailing ships and museum ships. The Maritime Folk Festival has been held every August since 1991. In Warnemünde, there is also a home of the Norwegian painter Edvard Munch, who lived here for two years. In general, Rostock, the name of Rostock, came from, uh, from Slavic languages, because Slavs in the 10th century started living here and created the city. Later German tribes arrived here but this is originally Slavic Slavic uh, city and the Slavic name. Alexandrinen Strohasse is one of the very first streets in Warnemünde, along with the street Amstrom. Fishermen, sailors and pilots lived here in small gabled houses, which mostly consisted of simple half-timbering. Only a small distance was kept between the houses, at most 1.5 meters wide, which was wide enough for a pregnant cow to pass through. And here another view of San Petri, San Petri church, church in, uh, in Rostock and the view of the 
of the walls, old walls of the city. Yes, in general, Rostock is a nice place to visit uh, for a weekend, I can say. Uh, during summer, maybe this uh, beach part is is uh, more uh, interesting because you can spend a couple of hours on the beach because uh, it's sunny and it's hot usually. Uh, in summer last time it was more than 30 degrees degree centigrade, so it was quite hot. And uh, during winter you have Christmas market, you have some decorations, so also this ambience is a little bit different. But uh, in general, I think weekend is, is enough, like two days, one day to, to see the, the old town, to see the, the, the buildings, to see the churches and uh, go to some museum. And the next day, go to the beach, to the Warnemünde district of the city in the north to explore a little bit these uh, fishermen villages and, and so on. And here the last, the last view of, of St. Petri Kirche. So, St. Peter's Church, when we went yesterday to see, to see the view from abroad.